slipping and schmoozing Getting to know you one question at a time Alright Slipping and schmoozing Talking about whatever it is we like Politics, religion The human condition Music and fiction Your new addiction Sipping and schmoozing Getting to know you one question at a time Alright Sipping and schmoozing Talking about whatever it is we like Sipping and schmoozing Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Unscripting Mario Hensley, your host interviewer, Emil Bonte. Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to our wonderful biography of our um, of our subject, Mario Hemsley. Um, last week, well, sorry, last two week two weeks ago, we had a discussion of music, which we're going to continue today, and we're going to explore. Um, pretty much the inspiration philosophy of um, these two gentlemen, Victor and Mario, um, as they talk about creator, being creators of music and enjoyers of uh, music. So, <laughs> one second, this is, <laughs> this is remember live. Remember, you can always, when you want to talk to that audience, remember you can just turn and speak right into that. I, I, am, a, I am disfigured at the moment, which I apologize for. So, um, no, <laughs> I'm going to continue to look straight ahead and talk to my uh, and, and, and talk to my subject and friend, which is you, Mario. And, of course, Victor. So, um, today we're going to, yeah, I want to discuss uh, a little bit of your influence as to... Um, two creators of um, who have uh, Mario. You have multiple albums, and Victor, you worked on the album yourselves. Uh, I want to have a discussion about um, what influences and stuff like that, the music that you listen to, and um, the importance that you find when you listen to music. So the first question I pose goes to both of you. Um, what do you find more important when you guys listen to music? Uh, are you uh, more into the lyrics? Or are you more appreciative of the music itself? What What's more important to you? Any well, you know, it's funny. For I think until you stop and think about it, that you might not even be sure. So for me, that's a that's a difficult. So I'm not sure. Okay. I think you know. I think when you when you hear something that you like, <coughs> there's an initial visceral kind of reaction to that to that track mm -hmm. and sometimes you're not really totally aware of the nuances of the track or whatever till later you and that could be both lyrically and musically like you have an initial reaction well i really like that then the more you listen to it you notice different musical elements that you like mm -hmm. and you may start to notice different so in some ways it's an experimental process in which you learn about yourself for me it's a, it's a learning process when I find music that inspires me because often it's not something that inspired me before and that makes me go, oh, wow, what was it about this? So sometimes I'm not sure. I can remember Erica Badu. Okay. When she first hit that first CD, she hit Baduism. Okay, yeah. I remember. And, and she first hit that something about it seemed so uniquely different that I was responding in kind of a visceral way, and then I started to dissect it. But at first, I did. First thing I did was respond. Okay. wasn't quite sure. In fact, I I kind of likened it to other experiences that when you have them, mm -hmm. you're not quite sure at first what is happening to you. Okay, you're not quite so sure. You know that something's happening and that you're being affected. Okay, but you're not quite so sure as to what's happening. Or as to the scope of the impact of that is going to have. So, so for me, music in that way, email reflects 
a reminder of that process. Okay. The process in a way, strange way. The process of living. You could kind of take it in mm -hmm. and just go with the flow. And then maybe try to figure out why it is that you responded to the. Why do you like the things that you like? And so for me, uh, I can only say that ja the jazzy stuff more music yeah. got me but hip hop also got to me in other words the big bottom right uh -huh. and the beats that come behind a lot of the music even for the mellow music that we use today uh -huh. that got me and when I was a kid there was a loudness button on the stereo that added this low end and everybody used to have the black folks I knew kept the loudness button <laughs> pushed in all the time because yeah. it gave out this bass so when that 808, that kick that we talked, I talked, we talked about that's, before, yeah, the right. hip hop beat. Yeah. The thing that I loved about hip hop was the way they dealt with the bottom. Now, I came up with funk, and in funk, they, they let the bass do the same thing. The bass is more out in the lead in funk. And then when hip hop comes along, you see this shift where the bass drops behind the kick, uh -huh. and the kick becomes the dominant element that booms. But the third of it, not the high pitch, that third, that boom, that kind of was one of those things that became integral. In other words, yeah, yeah. that, the bass, the kick, that crossed a bunch of age ranges, dude. It crossed a bunch of ages and types of music so that even when I was mixing jazz, mm -hmm. I used to say I mixed jazz aggressively in a hip-hop, in more of a hip-hop uh, style where I was pulling the bass back more. If anything, we might have had the bass equal to the kick. But we, we had this discussion in terms of the music production because it was obvious. Yeah. And soon, I too was bringing my bass just behind the kick in the mix. Uh -huh. And so that reflected that whole groove. But that has stayed, you know. They still, to me, hip-hop affected the way we mix music. And that mix, that effect crosses even into pop. Really? Even into pop and into rock. The way the, the, the effect of that mix, the, the effect of the bottom. There was a time, email where they almost, no offense, white music for the most part, mm -hmm. ignored the bottom. Okay. Just ignored it. Could you define the bottom again? The it's bass, the, bass? the kick, kick drum. Yeah. You go listen to some of the old mixes. They have the drums way in the background, and you could barely hear Beatles the kick. And, stuff like and that, even yeah. the bass, they didn't seem to want to put. Well, those aspects of rock, like where the Beatles were, mm -hmm. they were already showing some influence from blues. You're Just right, like yeah. with rock, like Led Zeppelin and yeah. the blends of the bass and stuff. They were showing some influence from blues, and because funk was also big within the black community, they, those influences were being felt. But the idea of having the bass be prominent and yeah. the kick drum yeah. be more prominent, those two specific elements, that's that's black. Okay. Okay, uh, that's black. Okay. Um, would it be, uh, before I move it over to Victor, um, should I quantify um, actual... Um, the way that it's sung as well, um, does that also play a... Oh, jeez. Yeah, yes. we, we would have to, yeah, we had to split it in three categories. Because then. that's, I mean... Yeah, you're right. So That came be... from the church. In other words, the way vocals were being presented, yeah, vocals. that happened when I was a kid because, if you again, the larger culture being white, yeah. we're singing it a certain way, the Pat Boone way, which is beautiful, even in the ways that we did. But they were singing it in a different way. The black church... Yeah. Okay, the black church Basically, and the blues. Ray Charles, how he right? Took, that yeah, whole thing. The, you, you, yeah, you, it's, it's, hard it, it's hard yeah. to separate out the church and the blues, the gospel, yeah. and the blues. But those two specific elements were specifically affecting black mu music in a way that was separate and distinct from white music. Okay, and that's what made the Motown phenomena occur, kind of. Okay, when people acknowledged the groove, the feel factor of you know church. Church music, even gospel, and so they it was it was music that made you want to clap and shake the tambourine and party, and therefore that was affecting American culture. Okay, because Americans were now starting to associate dancing differently. So I would say your answer would be you appreciate all three, whatever speaks to you 
immediately you appreciate so it, it, it's subjective it, it, and it sometimes on the song. exactly there okay. you go Emil. like i would ask you the same thing oh sure and you would have to stop <laughs> and think about it because okay. and then you start changing your mind you said well yeah it does depend you said you know what i'm not so sure because on come together yeah stuff like that by the Beatles, Beatles the, they the get lyrics. you in the first hit. I just named yeah. that because that's a song that gets you in the first the two seconds. The lyrics are nonsense, shoom, but, doom, doom, yeah, doom, but the music stands doom, out. Just that. Doom, doom, just doom. that. Shoom, doom, doom. That's it. That's yeah. it. It's defined. Now you're tripping. Yeah. So as to whether you're going with the lyrics or whatever. Yeah. So that's why I said there are those other, and there's other ones uh, for what it's worth. Buffalo Springfield, okay? Okay. Ding. There's something happening here. Yeah. They sing. They, yeah. That sample's been done. Yeah. And James Brown, too. Certain ones, you know, like Payback. Doom, yeah, doom, Big Payback. Doom, 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 doom. Ow. You haven't even got any going. Big Payback got you already. The Big Payback. Okay. Or For the Love of Money by the old oh, James, right? First few said, don't, don't, don't. They already got you. They already got you. Okay. So some, a lot of those, the music, but then Janice Ian, 17, right? Janice Ian? 17. You know, some okay. of them, the folk, you know, James Taylor, Fire and Rain. Do, okay. do, do, do. There's certain music phrases, even before James starts singing, he kind of got you a little bit with that on Fire and, fire and Rain. Yeah. So the, the examples are out there. That's okay. all I can say, I, and I wonder. That, that's fair. It, we, it, it would be best. Yeah, that's a, that's a fair answer to quantify it. It depends on the song. Either the music gets you first in, in the first second, or you 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 listen to it and the vocals draw you in. I I, I I'll usually find that it's always the lyrics that come second. You hear the song, but you don't hear the lyrics. You don't um, absorb what is being said to you until you start analyzing what you listen to. Well, there's those unique writers that stand out. I can tell you that mm -hmm. Eldon John oh, he's, and yeah. Bernie Toppin. Yeah. Toppin just sent him sheets of lyrics. And Eldon John was notorious, Yellow Brick Road. Mm -hmm. He just went into the recording studio with nothing written, nothing done. He just gathered everybody, went to the recording studio with a bunch of Bernie Toppin's lyrics and sat there and came up with really? Yellow Brick Road. Really? Right there. That's how that was done. That's almost unheard of. I could tell you for me and Irvin, yeah. the music is almost always done first. Uh -huh. And I would just sit and play instrumental versions of the music and think. Smoke and think and play instrumental versions over and over like I did with Blue. That's one of the songs that... Uh, that uh, uh, we did, I did with Blue, and I sat and played it over and over again. Since we, since you had actually requested oh, yeah, that yeah. of me, I'm because it's a short piece. Yes, let's 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 hear it and uh, talk about the process that went into you actually doing this, just doing this music. This is Blue. This is what Irvin brought to me. What, um, but this one of the first songs you did? Well, or? it became a big, it ended up being, and whenever it brought it to me, of course, it had no name. Okay. <clears throat> we usually gave it a date. Okay. So, okay, and so he brought it to me. It, it eventually became Blue. Okay. Because what happens is I start telling him things. Like, this was one when he played it. It was a series of pieces of music on a disc, for example. Uh -huh. And he would play them for me. He would make a CD back then and bring it over, and we would play it. Now... Some of the tracks I would say, ooh, this is one I said, ooh, okay. because I said, Irvin, this moves me. It's like he would have little pieces and some I would feel immediately like a gut reaction. Uh -huh. And so this was one, I said, this moves me. I'm writing to this. Okay. And it became blue. So this is the track that he brought to me. Apart, right okay. around the millennium 2000. 
Okay. So I ended up writing the lyrics. So this, this is just a song of that. melancholy. It's just, it, it invoked the color. Well, when you what do you think? See, what do you hear? See. Okay. It says, what do you feel from that? I said, ooh, urban. It's, it's, I said, it, it, ooh, it's, urban. It's melancholy. It, it has a melancholy I feel said. to it. Yeah. So yeah. then I wrote blue. So obviously, so then I made the association. But lyrically, and then when we did the version... We chose to do well, the upbeat version first. So when we redid the song, I wrote to this. Okay. And then when we redid the song, it was an upbeat version that actually comes back. Because of that issue of being melancholy, I lyrically came back to a point in the song where I wanted to lift you up. Okay. So I actually de- tried to deal with that. And so so what, you know, that did come up. I thought of that the whole time okay, but- because it was blue gonna be that thing but I wanted to give you something uplifting so lyrically at the end of the song I come back and I give you the part where I'm gonna keep on I'm gonna keep on holding on I'm not letting go I'm gonna keep on loving you I know what I'll do I'm gonna keep on loving you hey 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 so you made I'm it gonna cool. keep on loving you I'm not letting go. So you just keep on holding on. You turned the melancholy into hope. You made it. I know what I'll do. So I did that on purpose. Okay. I'm going to keep But When I heard this, Uh it touched me because I immediately went to my relationship. And I had to deal with that. But what? I remember. How I does this evoke a story, though? I, it's interesting to hear music and just well, feel something that moves you to. That's why I gave the example. I don't know it, okay. I would play it. See, I played it. Uh-huh. And you just And I started words. thinking, I remember lazy days behind closed shades. I can feel it like yesterday. Such a shame. I started, I started penciling. You know, when I think of you, I'm blue. So uh, that went on and... Penciled it, and later on we played it. Uh-huh. I mean, we do. We did the song. So th- this is the this is the upbeat song. This is the next uh, version of it. This is the next process. Well, this is the final. I was trying to get you the final. Okay. I I just want to know where the words. Ca- what when you hear music? Where well, how did that? I yeah, started. Where the words the, come okay, from? it's what it's like the process for me. Okay. I can only describe the process because then we'd have to decide how it's happening. <laughs> I'm sitting there mellow and I like that track. Yeah. Email, I played it like 20 times. I was like, I was like, I just played it over and over again. I just couldn't help but that whole part of it, that whole. Even right there, he had me. I said, oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. See, the whole thing was in the writing to me, in the ways of like Rod Temperton and other people, conversation sometimes. With who? With the person yourself, the lyrics become a conversation. Mr. Watchman. <laughs> it's fine. That, that is interesting. I, I, that is a very interesting thing, being able to. Because it's communication, you're trying to express an emotion over music. It, it, it's, I, I'm very, very fascinated with what, what, what the process is like and thinking when it comes to hearing this, feeling something, and invoking a communication of what it is that you're feeling. Well, I want to, I want, I'm trying to find because I'm nice as stone. <laughs> yeah, I'm nice as stone, which is a good thing. But I'm trying to show you, okay, I'm trying to show you. The lyrics, so I gotta actually okay. go in there and. And do you think you can recreate the process of when you? Well, that, well, we I mean, I, well, I, when I play the final one. Okay. You're gonna hear the. Okay, we're gonna. So we are. We're gonna go through the process. I just wanna read the lyrics. So twenty. To you, you, because that was me. Yeah, at the mo- in, in the moment, feeling the moment, feeling the music, and what. Yeah, because I wanted. Because at the time, it was the fact that. There's a lyrics folder over to your right under document templates. Up, up, up. There you go. Lyrics. Okay, here we go. I don't see it either. Where is the 
search. <laughs> Create upload. Uh, okay. Okay. In the in, in the real meantime, here, we're here, but I want to okay, lyrics the, because the remember the whole thing is I knew it was sad. Okay, but you. It's about and it's about me thinking about her and us being broken up. Okay. So watch how I so was, dealing with that. Listen was it to a fresh text. experience or like was it a fresh experience or was it just something that was on your mind at the, or? No, I was suffering. Suffering at the time. Yes, I was oh. suffering. It took five years to get over this. Wow, <laughs> five. Ye- oh, this sounds different. <laughs> Dark and gray, there were no words to say. We just knew we were two. We just held down to each other. Yeah. I remember lazy days behind closed shades. I can feel it like yesterday. Can't believe it turned out this way. Can't erase all the feelings. I'm just blue Thinking of you I'm not mad cause the love that we had I know it was true True lyrics, that's the lyrics. How long did it take you to write this? Oh, the, the, the actual lyrics? Yeah, how long did that take? Started, like maybe an hour In an half an hour Really? I thought if you start flowing It's so bad well, well, you don't have to go so back. What's that experience like? Like, what does it just? Oh, but this it was cathartic. Okay, T- talk to me about that. No matter what, your this is her. You're saying yeah. there's no way they can know how I love you. They can't say there's no way they can know. Only you That's know the, the rhythm. Yeah. Notice I changed my rhythm. Yeah, that's why I changed it again. Life has a way of bringing home reality One day you will wake up and you will see What a waste and the irony of it all I taught her this song too Meaning you had to sing it to her and this year Yeah, okay, that's how I teach her the song This was catharsis, so what happened was when my songs got better, it was because I started being more personal. I was told in a contest that was one of the reviews okay. that I needed to write. I was writing from a distance. So, so was it, the, it was fear so of um, exposing yourself for your feelings? What, what was holding you It's back? not natural. It's just like acting. You have to be willing to show yourself. Okay. What you show was I showed myself. Yeah. Was I started writing about things that I felt intimately and that were different and difficult to express in yeah. a way. Like this is just being blue about her. I'm just blue. I'm thinking of you. I'm not mad. Okay. But remember, I wanted to come back at that end, but I knew my sack. Russo's blowing like he's mad. Like one take, just tear it up. You didn't have to shit one take. I take how I come back with this part. I'm gonna keep on loving you. I'm not letting go. I'm gonna keep on holding on. All of this is really male. I wasn't I know what taking I words. Or I was ex- really just expressing the truth in as simple and straightforward as a way as I could. Lyrics. On. Not a lot of fancy words like Hal David. I'm going to keep on loving you. I'm not letting go. I'm going to keep on holding on. So did you envision her when you, was this like you having a conversation? This was you. Oh, yeah. Was that I was speaking to us the whole time. That's what made it personal. Every part of this song is personal. Doesn't that, isn't that, every, every single part of it. Yeah, isn't that a little? I'm gonna keep on loving you. I, 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 I'm gonna keep on 
how did it feel? Because, because the, the way you move on to me is you go on and say, I'm going to. That was the way I moved on. I said, I'm not going to try to not love you. Okay. I was going to let it hurt and go through that natural thing. But I'm not like, going to fight loving you. That required me to go someplace that I'm going to keep on so I said, I'm going to keep on. That's why I said, I'm going to keep on loving you. It does feel blue. Let it go. Do you, can you say um, when it comes to the writing process, was there, any, was there anybody that um, influenced Influence the writing or influence in you helping you find your voice when it came to being able to express? Was there anybody that you felt connected to that helped you write? Oh, you mean there were my influences that coming up. When I first started. Okay. Okay, so when I first started, okay. I wrote out songs by Smokey Robinson and counted the lead ins and the changes the whole thing. How many bars to lead in? Like, Tracks of My Tears, I wrote that out. People say I'm the life of the party, but it's not that it starts out with the other song. You wrote it out? I wrote it out, and I counted out the bars. Why? How many bars? How old were you when you were doing this? The first time? 14 or? No, because I didn't try songs for a while. So what made you interested uh, to analyze? I was grown. Depth? Now that I think about, it, I was grown because I—that's the way I was going to approach it. I had already been writing poetry, so, you, so I went to look at Motown and the stuff I already knew and loved that I could almost sing by heart. Yeah, I went and looked at that now closely, looking at the structure, the verse, chorus. So you, because poetry was so different. Okay. So I was actually older. No, I was. This was like. Uh, this is in the eighties, probably you early eighties. Like a scientific, you tried to do well, a scientific was, method to music. Well, I mean, it's just where one you, can one can. Is there is methodology to lyrics? Of course, yes. It's all and timing one can look and at mathematics. It. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you can look at it that way. But I, re- I what I did was look to the songs I already loved. Yeah. And they were mostly the balladeer songs, right? So that's okay. why I went to Smokey. I did Stevie too. But I went to okay. Smokey and Stevie, right, uh-huh. to certain songs. Like, I know, I remember I did Tracks of My Tears. Okay, what else? And Ooh, Baby, Baby. That was also Smokey, okay. Smokey, so I did a few, because the Motown stuff, they did a bunch of musical changes, too, in like a three-minute song. And so I saw that then. So, you so were- it affected me lyrically. And so I was like, I was organized lyrically, so by the time Irvin and I started working together, email, uh-huh. I was very conscious of lead in verse chorus, all of that, I was very conscious of that and why, had been trying that. Why? Why were ballads so important to you? Um, why, why Smokey and Stevie? What, what? What was it about them? Saw those particular songs, the lyrics that appealed to you. Well, that was it for Smokey. It was the lyrics. Okay. Not only was the music wonderful for those tracks, but Smokey was as especially for that at that moment, and continues, you know, to be recognized to this day. Yes. He was a, a, one of the extreme balladeer songwriting people that was out there and wrote a lot of people redid his stuff yeah definitely and for years and years so Same i went to stevie, look yeah. yeah stevie too so stevie i went to go too. look at them and study them email because i was already grooving i didn't go far remember i went to the songs i already liked yeah makes my sense. sharia Moore. yeah because i was oh because while you're singing it you don't realize what you're doing i said oh wow because the first thing that shocked me mm-hmm was that I had to cut the number of lyrics, verse, words way down. Really? When you'd go from poetry. You know, I would have poems that would do be like eight, nine, ten stanzas or whatever. Uh-huh. And in a song, you're probably going to have two. two. Yeah. Two and a, a chorus that a repeats. Chorus bridge, yeah. That was cutting the lyrics. All of a sudden, you had to make your point. And not only that, the whole thing of the chorus, the hook... Yeah. Needing to be something that was singable that you repeated over and over again, you needed to pull that off like that. So that was a huge change in focus. Well, let's talk about poetry. Uh, what was? Tell me your influence when it came to tro- poetry, and then tell me was it hard in, um, transitioning to lyrics when it came to writing poetry? What was? Who was your poetry influences? Oh, I read all the, every everything. So okay, Rudyard. 
but I'm talking about Din, the ones that you may call, you may talk of Jen and Bill when you're quartered safe out here and you're sent to penny fights and I'll just shot it. But when it comes to slaughter, you will do your work on water and you will lick the blooming boots of them that's got it. Now in India, sunny climb where I used to spend my time a servant of Her Majesty the Queen of all them black faced crew, the finest man I knew was our regimental beastie Gunga Din. He was din, din, din. You heathen, where the mischief have you been? Just one, Shakespeare. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing in them, to die to sleep no more and by sleep to say we end the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to, Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. I, that's the rub. You seem to have an actor's <laughs> cadence, yet you chose music. I, 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 so, I did a bus, so I did poetry. Yeah, but. And I read everything, too, Email. I read. I, I know and Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe. Poe. I loved Edgar Allan Poe. The, the, but was the it Raven. because of the horror influence? What 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 drove you to po what Ray, is the Poe? Poe had it did a lot of internal writing. He was one of the most rhythmic poets. How so? so how so? What, there's there's rhythm to the rhythm. He did what they called an internal rhyme scheme. Where he would have a rhyme that was halfway through the line. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. They called it. They called it eternal rhymes. And it's all through the Raven. Okay. And the Raven still is sitting, still is sitting, still is sitting. Mm -hmm. And the Raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting. <laughs> but he, the 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 rhythm of Edgar Allan Poe made you appreciate me. Oh, just, no, just made me appreciate him. Okay. You know, he had the short stories, but he had the poetry. I, I, Annabelle I, Lee and all that. Yeah. So I, I love the fact that you said that there's a rhythm in poetry. Can you explain, oh, yeah. what, what, explain what you mean by well, rhythm? And okay, which really had a lot to do with my fascination and love of, say, Gil Scott Heron. Okay. And Tazaki Shange, who wrote for Color Girls, and I share pieces of Color Girls. The rainbow. The, yeah, the, the, okay. because that poetry or spoken word, it predated spoken word or whatever. Okay. Those elements to me were wonderful. My poetry class at Howard, my instructor, Miss Glover, Miss Glover the poetry lover, Miss Glover told me that I was way too traditional that I needed to at least experiment. She said, Mario, she says, you do interesting work and stuff, but you're writing like you're 90 years old from a time way back where today people are experimenting. You know, in some of your poems, you even use an old English okay. and stuff like that. So I looked at it specifically, and that's when I made the shift. Because I had already, I had was just discovered, well, I knew the last poet's, I was reciting Last Poets. I was reciting Dolomite, Rudy Ray Moore, Signifying Monkey. I was reciting that in school. What? So I decided to give those influences a little more room to express themselves. You consider Rudy Ray Moore a poet? <laughs> I guess he kind of... A limerick. Dolomite. Dolomite uh, was a limerick. He had limericks, but I wouldn't necessarily... Some, some folks say that Willie Green was the baddest motherfucker in <laughs> the world I've ever seen. <laughs> I want you to light up a joint, screw your wig on tight, and take a real good shit. Because I'm going to tell you about this motherfucker called Dolomite. Now, Dolomite was from San Antonio, a rambling, scambling young motherfucker from the day he was born. Now, from the day he dropped from his mammy's ass, he jumped up and slapped his paw in the face and said, from now on, cocksucker, I'm running this place. From the age of one, he was drinking whiskey and gin. At the age of two, he was eating the bottles that came in. Now, Dolomite had an uncle called Sudden Death. Killed a dozen bad men from the smell of his breath. Now, when his uncle heard how Dolomite was treating his old mom and pa, he said, let me go check this little rascal before he go too far. One day, one cold, dark December night, the uncle broke in on Dolomite. He said, Dolomite, better straighten up and treat your brother right, because if you keep right on with your dirty mistreating, I'm going to whip your ass yeah, till your heart stop beating. beating. Yeah. Dolomite snatched his leg off. He was that damn fast. So, yeah, I did all of them. You Sing the fire monkey. Sing the fire monkey. 
The monkey, the elephant, took the lion and swung the lion up against the tree. Nothing but lion shit, as far as I can see. <laughs> So, so what did you what what, what so what what appealed to you when it came to poetry was it was it satirist was it um I did was it romantic I did all of I, them. but when you were exploring what what stood out to you when you were actually going to the exploration because like, Dolomite is a weird pull to put as a poet I, that, I, I ranked a lot of love I, did, I liked Emily Dickinson I liked a lot of love poems. Emily Dickinson is also a weird. You just quoted Dolomite. Now we're in, what? What is it that appeal to you about Emily, Miss Dickinson? Oh well, she was the she was the master of personification. In other words, when you give inanimate objects qualities, uh-huh. because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. Mm-hmm. She was wonderful so at giving an animal inanimate objects. She was a metaphor. She was a miracle. Traits like that was what she did. Yeah. Even though they think of her, I think that I should never see a poem as lovely. She, they think of that, but there's a bunch of other stuff that she did that was wonderful. So it, was it because she was thought provoking? Well, that too. Okay. You know, but remember, I was also liking Rudyard Kipling and Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, yeah. So did you like interpreting poems? And then I got exposed to the black. Poetry, even so, historic stuff like Langston. Langston what becomes Hughes. of a dream deferred? Yeah, does it dry up like a raisin in the sun, or fester like a sore and then run? Does it sag like an old woman under a heavy load, or does it explode? And you came to that later. Yeah, well, yeah, well, well, first of all, yeah, because coming up, you figure age raised. The black stuff was hitting me. I hit it. I got 12, that early. 13. Yeah, I got the Langston Hughes stuff. He had twelve. Early. Tw- I'm trying to think because it was Ellen. You know, you had to go get it yourself, kind of. So I would say for me, it was more like junior high. Okay. Okay. So when I was starting to read more of the the stuff, you know, there was stuff out there, more black stuff. We're in the middle of the civil rights movement. Yeah. So there was a bunch of stuff to read, and I was starting to read those things but at that same time being thrown back to the history right because this going back to to uh langston hughes yeah going back to the harlem renaissance going back and reading those things Mm -hmm. now a lot of that for me happened once i got to howard okay because i was introduced to a lot of those authors at howard in classes that i had uh, who wrote, um, what, there was a documentary, uh, I'm Not Your Negro, who was that? That was James Baldwin. He did poems too, right? Yes. Did he have influence on you as well? Well, I read his stuff. Uh-huh. Yes. Okay. I mean, I read his stuff. There was, you know, a bunch of them. Well, he was one of the main ones we read. Okay, yeah. You know, uh, but there were other people. It's been so long now, I get, you know, it's been a long time. <laughs> okay. But, but, but. James Baldwin, and then in terms of poets and other stuff. But he was one of the big writers that were around the time, you know, of the 60s. Remember around that time also, you had, um, now I'm blocking on a big, maybe you, uh, my man who did Roots. Oh, uh, Alex Haley. Hey, Alex Haley, thank you. He had just done the autobiography of Malcolm X. But that's not a poem. <laughs> no, but as writers, yeah. we were being exposed to these types of things. So yeah. I was, it was more of the whole emphasis on black literature, I think, email. That's what I was Around trying to say. Around gotcha. that time, gotcha. Because before that, you didn't have things available the same. Now, for example, you had black bookstores yeah. with, that was getting black content and geared more to these kinds of things because there was more consumer demand. And because of my old man, I was I was, had access to the black bookstore to get books, and so yeah. I was starting to read more. Did you what poems? What what, what poems help guide you towards? Because a lot of stuff you write about is spirituality and love. What was your what poems influenced those particular subjects when it came to when it came to influence the stuff that you write? Because Emily Dickinson. Well, was, Invictus may be the biggest one. Invictus is who? Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me 
unafraid. For it matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. How have you memorized all these poems? <laughs> That's Khalil, Khalil can... Gibran, forget not that I shall come back to you. A little while, a moment of rest upon the wind, and another woman shall bear me. I mean, little pieces of stuff, but I'm just saying. So it sounds like you enjoy interpreting. People who, you like, you to like me, writers about read. Stuff, yeah. To me, writers read. Of course, and really, yeah. they read. Usually, they read a lot. It depends what they like to read. Correct. But they usually read a lot of what they want to read. So, would it be so, fair to say that you love interpretation? You like like you like thinking about the things that you read, which is why poetry speaks to you. Why songs speak to you. Because that's a the lot whys are about. hard to say. I can tell you that because some poetry is just funny, right? Like some, yeah, satirical. Twas yeah. brillig in the slithy toes did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the burrow groves and the moam wrath outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my friend. Son. The teeth that tear, the claws that catch. Beware the jub jub bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. Here's Lewis Carroll. Who writes a poem yeah. out of nonsense? Yes. So George, George Clinton is also the one who said, <sighs> "You know, smell my finger." <laughs> nonsense, you know, too. Oh, so yeah. all of those are components. So yes. So what you're what you're what you're seeing is my p p particular affinity for those things, even though they may cross a broad range of things. Right? Yeah. They kind of will cross cultural and genre things, mm -hmm. you know. So how, how did you make the transition to m how, music? When, uh, other than doing the study and writing it out, did you, did, what did you notice when cr crossing the bridge from writing poetry to lyrics? Well, what, what can you say is the difference? Remember, what, what? I made a conscious decision as a young adult uh -huh. to start doing some songs. That was right before I started doing stuff with Vic and him. I had decided, and I, I, the way I started... Mm -hmm was by trying to sing the songs, sing the lyrics into a tape recorder. Okay. That's the way I started. How did, how did it work out? <laughs> it worked because I could get the whole idea down. I could Good. sing in a melodic way. Uh -huh. I could do the bass lines and stuff. Do, 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 do. I could do bass, make instrument sounds and yeah. all that. And I, and I did. I, I, the idea was to remind me of all the parts so that I could redo the song. Gotcha. So I wouldn't mind making the bass song sounds, the drum things, mm -hmm. all of that. And then sing the lyrics in a melodic way, as if I was singing the song. So that's what I did to start. Okay. And that's where it also came to play, like, for example, with me rewriting the smoky stuff mm -hmm. so I could get a look, way to look at my own lyrics. What, was that to just get the timing and rhythm? Yeah, well, just the, yeah even though like I was mostly becoming aware of what I was already... See, I was such an avid music listener like yourself and your brother. Yeah. I was subconsciously aware of certain things that were going to sound right to me or not. Like the song has an opening. Sometimes they sing la, 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 woo, woo, woo for yeah. a while before they hit the lyric. Yeah. And they usually start, what I became aware of is yeah. you had a lyric and usually did a lyric before you hit that chorus or hook. So I had all my examples to go back and look at. Now I was understanding what I already liked. So it would be like um, Daydreaming by Aretha Frank Franklin where it had that preamble, that lovely, right. dreamy I would count it mood. out. Yeah, it would be like the mood. There would be four, eight, 16 bars. Okay. Usually there were 16 bar intros for most things. There were some people did long intros. There were like 32 bars. Okay. But 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 you would I went and counted them out, mm -hmm. and then I styled my own songs so that by the time I got with Irvin, I was very structured <laughs> because of my poetry and because of that. Yeah. I was very structured and disciplined, and I had already written songs. Okay. They were just musically not sounding like what you would want, but they at least have been written. So how long did it get for you to get the blue? <laughs> how, how did you go from, how long did it take for you to get to uh, counting, figuring things out to blue? When you seem to have got the structure, understand how to set the rhythm to your words and stuff like that, how long did it take for you to get from one place to the next? 
You mean for that particular song? Just before you get the hang of it, I guess is what I'm saying. For you to... When Irvin and I would go in the studio, because by the, the song would be written like that when I wrote the lyrics and everything to the original piece. Yeah. Okay? So then we sat out to lay out the song. Okay. So what I first do is structure the rhythm section, just the basic beats in that order. 16 bar lead in, verse, chorus, and just arrange those into the rough order how we do the song, just okay. the back beat. Okay. The ba- even though those particular beats may change, yeah. just the basic beat but in all those segments so you can, and I would put in markers in the song. We were doing this on the computer. Okay. And then Irvin would play in the other parts. He would play the keyboards, and I would record it into the computer as MIDI, okay. which really was remembering what notes he hit, how hard he hit it, and when he hit it. Okay. And then it recreates it in a way like a digital electric piano. And you would do all of this before you wrote anything? Well, this was usually by the time we were doing this, the song was written. Okay. When we were trying to structure the song and be really neat and clean, we had to start from scratch. In other words, okay. we had that piece that he, but we were going to do something different. Okay. Okay. So, same, so we usually start from scratch while listening to the original version. And every time you did the process of music making, did you ever have the words first or was it always music first and then you wrote to it? Or did well, you have Robert like- and I was always the, the music first. So In it- fact, that's how we got started. Irvin had the instrumental version of uh so so did every last one of his songs influence a uh, was it like did it influence something that you were going through at the moment and then that's where the song sprang forth from w- w- where did usually your songs come from you would hear the music and it would evoke something and that's where the words come from based upon the music itself or did you never have anything that you wanted to okay. do? Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to... No, we, well, that. sometimes we wrote music together, too. You like did write music Everett together. and I would get in here in the studio, and he would have ideas, and I would start playing the horn or singing and stuff, uh-huh. and then lead it into a different direction, and then we would end up writing a song and start laying it out. But it would be music first, and then... Yeah, lovely... Play. Well, the song that kind of brought Irvin together was and I together was Lovely Ride because he had it, and I'll play the beginning of it, because he thought it was so complex. He couldn't imagine anybody writing lyrics to it. Okay. And, and when I heard it, I said, I could do lyrics to that. So this is, this is the thing that inspired you to write. <laughs> huh? thank, thank you off mic person. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Say it again. Favorite. One of your favorites. One of his favorites. Yeah, and this is where he was sh- shocked about my lyric writing because I took a track that he was considered this a first? jazz track. This is your first song? Yes, because first song where that happened. We okay. were working on other things together. Okay. About this 10 is minutes. First. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Every goddamn time. <sighs> about it. he wants to sing it <laughs> this is when I was getting poetic did you sing to it as you wrote it or how did you find it you're, you're not going to get an asshole you're, you're in for love I right. on the record. We can go back yeah to I say so, okay so this is when I shot her when I wrote the lyrics he was stunned but like you said he couldn't hear anything and I sang and what was so different that you're noticing, email is I took a certain melodic point from the beginning. In other yeah. words, he already had this jazz music that was fairly complex. Yeah. That's why I came at it lyrically, melodically from the get-go. Because I was listening to his music. Da, 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 it's the best thing. No more testing. You never had a lover like me. 
Betcha. So exciting. Feel it tightening. You and I will share the same dreams. That's right. We, did you know that love would make you feel so enchanted? So you just found the gaps in the words. Did you know that love perfectly. would make you high? I see. Okay. Once you feel it, because I was following right. him musically. Yeah, definitely. Once you feel it, you would never Stop go on watch. without dancing. <laughs> we're gonna. We're, we're gonna. That's lovely ride. God, let us talk, Victor. <laughs> Jesus nah, Christ. Strict. We, no, we no. got five minutes. Shut up. Think money. Think money. <laughs> Okay. Well, think money. You'll change your mind. Okay. <laughs> 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 got you. Lovely ride. Yeah, in for. And oh, this actually the lyrics from this are from a true experience. Which is, I, I had a young lady that I was dating, who early in our dating, like the third or fourth date, she gave me the speech about how I needed to just go along with her program that every man who's ever been with her has just loved being with her. And that if I was a smart man, I would just kind of like go along with her program and not make ways. And so I wrote this song imagining myself as her talking oh. to me. It's very, that's why she's so that's, egotistical. Oh, God. She, she God. Get, We're going to retitle this show. segment Cell Phone. Yes, because you guys so have a habit. Every time I you guys have a phone. habit of having your cell phones on. I think it's great, though. I think it's good. Next time, answer them. I, I love that most people who said they love it always seem to admonish every teacher. Yeah, I love every teacher they I have do. that hits me with like, yeah, I love that you made a mistake. <laughs> I, I'm going to hit you now. I love it. I, I think it's I great. Love that it happens. Well, you just got so much stuff here. Oh, hey, but so that was the thing. That made all the music better. Notice across the board, it all got personal. What? what? Not vague concepts. I'm not writing about vague concepts. I, I, yeah, it's all I'm writing about specific shit to do with me. Quickly, what would you consider? What would you consider your apex song? The song where you realize I got it. I, this is I I I, I I I I I know what I'm doing. Funny. I mean, excuse me. Maybe today. What's that one? Play it real quick. Just a little, just a little bit, Victor. Calm oh no, no, no! You guys, are, no, no, no! I'll do like they do in sponsorship. And, and, and tell me, tell me about this song. This song is catharsis because I wrote this song this for me. For in album, other words, or... Urban and I did the music together. Okay. And then I went off to, as we do. I go went off to play it over and over and write the lyrics. And so I kind of, as he would say, I bled into this one because. This one is very autobiographical. Oh, what, what, what even though people it? have considered it to be sad once again. What, what inspired but, it? But the whole idea was, the story was, maybe today could be the day that everything changes. For the better? For the better. Okay. Maybe today. That's not hopeful. With everything going the way it's been going, one could change one's attitude and take charge and change. So it, I was speaking, I was writing it to me. I was actually me talking to me. Trying to cheer yourself up. Trying to cheer myself up. That's and awesome. I, Irvin had done the music. Most, you know, I had been with Irvin. We did the music. But, you know, mostly Irvin, I was, he had started off with the beginning thing. That do 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 There's this thing he does at the beginning. And I said, Irvin, that's the shit. do 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 So that was where we started. do 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 All right, so, let's, let's, let's have this play us out. So we're going we're gonna to toss it over to Victor, who I'm so sorry. Yeah. I, I, it, I could be, to, it could be the fade out song. Yeah, this will be our, this, this will be our play out song. It's also so, my best mix. I, I also wanted to get your thoughts on this. Um, next week, we are going to talk about the philosophy, and we're going to talk about our philosophy, the love of music. Uh, we didn't get to it this week, but that's the way it seems to go. <laughs> so I would like to thank everyone, and uh, once again, I turn to Victor to the show. Thank you so much. <laughs> you guys are crazy. <laughs> you guys are literally crazy. Maybe today I'll walk away Away from all the I want to let this play before I say anything. That okay. have kept me locked away for years. Marla, give them, give them about 10 or 15 seconds of the inspiration like of this song just so we can just have this. Because you did such a good job of explaining your methodology in Before I can like come in and close out. Bird, to fly. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what?
see? Oh, see, now wait a minute. That's now, see, I said, see, see, now what, what I did. Well, because I can't do it without thinking of yeah. See, that's what the test was. Remember. <laughs> I love it. And Mel said it. Autobiographical. I wrote it because you because we were talking over the the, the first verse is the most important. All right, it's only, play it again. It's play only it again. a two verse song. All right, play it again. That's man. another thing about stuff, you know. That's a trip, you guys. When I wrote this, it's a two verse song, so you had to scale the words down. So you had to be careful in how you were going to pick yourself up when it came to writing this. So you were, you were careful in basically. All right, I'm I'm writing this to myself. This is about maybe today I walk away. Away from all the fears that have kept me locked away from years and years. Like a wounded child, I learned to hide all the pain I kept inside. Like a caged bird, unlocked, afraid to fly. Maybe today will be the day when I can learn to walk away where there's a will there is a way, maybe today. Words get lost in time in a silent search for peace of mind. Still inside remains memories and the pain. <laughs> okay. So you take what you can find and you live one day at a time. Maybe today will be the day to change. That is beautiful. So that's what is that's what the that word, is actually. Uh, shit, I wish and I, I wrote could it write to, myself. to myself. Like I wish I, I could write to myself like that. And Kit just sings it. Uh, all right, Victor, take us out, or we'll we'll be here forever. <laughs> Look, you excellent set us uh, subject and segment. When you actually review this, you will come out with the unintended consequence that you have to retitle what this is about. <laughs> Because this is a great lesson in Mario's motivation and technique, and you are trying to grab the understanding of how it comes about. Yes. Maybe Enjoy today this. I'll this is a wonderful way, away from all the fears that have kept me locked away for years and years. Like a wounded child, I learn to hide all the pain I've kept.
schmoozing, talking about whatever it is we like. Politics, religion, the human condition, music and fiction, your new addiction. Sipping and schmoozing, getting to know you one question at a time. Music